for taking the time to speak with us and congratulations on a really wonderful film. Maybe you could just start for, you know, for those who haven't seen the film, uh, what is it about? Um, I mean, the pitch of the film uh, doesn't sound as optimistic as the film is <laughs> at the end of the day, I think, because it's um, about Syrian orphans living in southeast Turkey in the border city near, the, near Syria. Uh, I met the, um, the real kids because I decided to do some something regarding this uh, horrible war that is going on and on. Mm. So we thought maybe to do some workshops and to make some research and see what we can do. So we started like a big humanitarian um, project um, that um, included uh, acting workshops. So I saw a few hundred orphan kids. Mm. Uh, we had great time, we played, and I got to know more, more uh, about their life, their needs, their dreams. At the same time, we tried to provide them with humanitarian aid, what they needed uh, in sense of these like existential uh, things. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that process, I was more sure about what kind of movie I could make. Mm -hmm. So I selected like a group of kids that I find most motivated, most talented. And I made a script that was based uh, on uh, the real uh, stories. Mm -hmm. I couldn't expose them to do exactly what they went through, so I made mm -hmm. something that was based on. So the movie is basically fiction, uh, but it contains the real uh, elements, mm -hmm. uh, starting from events. Uh, but I think what's more important, it, it contains the real emotions and real um, details of their uh, uh, everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so I guess these people aren't <coughs> professional actors. What are some of the challenges and opportunities of working with, with, with actors in that way? Well, I'm not afraid of uh, working with kids. I have experience working with kids in Bosnia also. Um, and I think if you uh, select the right kids, then they are the best collaborators you can have. They're really professional and really serious. You can rely on them. Sometimes even better than on adult uh, collaborators. Mm -hmm. So what's important with the kids is that they really want to do it because you cannot bribe the kid, you know. Kid, you cannot say, I'm going to pay you more or something. You have a contract, you know. So there is like trust that you have to establish and develop uh, between you and them. Uh, there was this language barrier because I don't speak Arabic. They don't speak English or Bosnian, of course. But at the end of the day, I think that we communicated in some other level than language. You know, we could understand each other with the um, you know, like emotionally, and they were clear what I want to do, and they were really perfect. And so, the, I mean, when you watch the film, it does almost have like a documentary feel at times, but then also there's, you know, some incredible cinematography there. It's, you know, wonderful scenes were taken between these interiors and these, these outdoor landscapes. How would you describe uh, your style or your approach to filmmaking? Mm. Well, I'm always trying to combine something because somehow I understand that art is search for beauty in this world. I mean, however, we try to talk about serious things and to maybe put some questions or try to um, warn about something. I think at the end of the day, we at least I am trying to search for the beauty in the most maybe tough uh, circumstances in life. Uh, because I live in a place that is not so uh, bright. <laughs> I mean, we had war in the 90s, and then we have these 20 years of so-called transition. And if you just uh, look, from, look at it as some gray and place without perspective, uh, then it wouldn't be possible. So I'm trying always to search what's where is the balance between pain and joy? Where is uh, how we can laugh uh, in the most hard um, uh, events uh, in our life? And I know since I've been through war myself when I was a teenager, I know that there is always balance. So what I tried is to find hope and beauty and friendship and real like communication and perspective for those kids, even though they are refugees, they are orphans. So when you look at it, it seems like something, the, the worst possible position that a person can be in. Um, but there are kids, so kids are beautiful by, by nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that uh, portraying this um, complexity of life of one kid, uh, I hope that we could relate to it. 
uh, as they were our own kids or, or if they were us. Um, because even I during the war, uh, it's not just black and white like any other situation in life. There is always something more than just um, suffering. And um, I think the uh, portraying complexity of life and emotions of human beings um, gives you possibility to relate to it. Mm -hmm. uh, even though if you, I mean, we had this screening last night here in China and we had like a full theater of Chinese, mostly young people. And it was amazing how they respond to the movie. Mm -hmm. They were really moved and they cried and they mm -hmm. could relate to it. And I'm not sure that they knew much about Syria or Bosnia or mm -hmm. um, uh, facts uh, about the situation there. Mm -hmm. So, as you mentioned there, it does explore some, you know, important themes in the sense of exposing the reality of life for these young kids. But then in other ways, it's, you know, much more just a human story and perhaps aiming to foster empathy. So what do you think the key takeaways will be for people when they watch this film? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, th there is too much... Um, things that we follow in news, like too ma many bad things, like many wars and um, uh, people are, g g I mean, dying all over the place. But uh, in one moment you start to perceive that as numbers, you know. Ah, there are like 10 people killed on the street in some city, or there is in some war like 100 people got killed from a bombing. Mm -hmm. But then you forget that all those people are human beings with their, with their uh, families behind them and history and hopes and dreams that are cut and so on and so on. So I think that once when you, um, I mean, art, I think film cannot really, it's not history, it's not uh, even journalism. So you are not, um, you are not presenting facts uh, in sense of what happened before and what will happen after. But uh, you are presenting human life with, uh, like part of human life, but with all its emotions and all uh, what is reality of this a part that you try to grab mm. of, of someone's life. And I think that contains more truth than any fact that you can write about. Mm. At least I hope for that. So um, I didn't know much about Syria before starting this project. I have never been there. And the only thing that I knew was like ISIS, you know, and it was so gray and blurry and, you know, it wasn't for me close at all. But then when I met those people, I understood that they are so similar to me, to any of us. And then I tried to uh, show basically what I witnessed. Um, so my hope is that people when watching this film will maybe change the perspective of that conflict in sense of um, starting to think of Syrians as any other people, you know. Mm -hmm. They are bad, they are good people, but still um, I think that suffering of innocent is something that we should never forget when we talk about some conflicts and if we can do anything to stop it, I think it's our duty in a way. Mm -hmm. I'm a filmmaker, I cannot do much. Mm -hmm. I can do films, but if this film can change a little bit uh, um, to, to warn people how war is the worst thing that humankind invented, then I would be more than happy. And to an extent, we are living in very sort of politically tumultuous times. It feels that things are very polarised. Do you see that film and culture more widely can play a role in trying to shift some of our perspectives and perhaps bring, bring back some empathy in the way that we think of each other around the world? I'm sure that film can do much because um, in, in this like uh, post-truth era, it doesn't matter what are the facts of anything what happens. It's just some, uh, it's more about manipulation, I think. And I really feel frustrated even reading about things because I don't know to whom to trust anymore and uh, how I can find my position in all that and what should be my opinion about it. What can I do or not do? And I think that cinema is a um, possibility to, to build up bridges between cultures and people. Because at the end of the day, however different we are, however different languages or culture or religion or non-religion we are following, we 
feel the same, we love the same, we suffer the same, you know. And sometimes during this process, when I put some scene and, um, and give indications to actors, some Syrian collaborators told me, ah, oh, it's yes, how did you know? It's exactly how we do it, it's exactly how we feel. And I said, yeah, because I know it's very universal. I mean, we had refugees in our war, so it's the same. I mean, how can it be different to be Syrian refugee from being Bosnian refugee or any other? Uh, nations. So I really hope that art sh can, I mean, we should, uh, we lost audience in art house cinema, unfortunately. Most mm -hmm. of the time there are no places where we can find um, audience or to uh, make them come to see films that are not really attractive in the sense of having some big names and being, mm -hmm. you know, entertainment just took over. But if we convince people to come and watch uh, serious films or art house films, I, can, I think it can help mm -hmm. in building up bridges. And what's been the reception so far to the film? And what does it mean to you to be here in Pinyao as part of this brand new festival? Well, so far we had this world premiere uh, and a national premiere in Antalya Film Festival in Turkey. It was really special because the kids could come and attend this uh, screening. And um, it was, I mean, they cannot travel, of course, they don't have visas or even passports. So it was really special to share this moment with them. For me, that was most important that they like it. Um, their reaction was sometimes, it was great, but funny at the same time, because they complained why I cut some scenes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they said like, yeah, but we did this moment when I was doing that and that, why did you cut it? But it was really nice and very touching. And uh, audience also in Antalya, really, the reception was really nice. And I think people were, it was really, how to say, tricky moment when we did it. It was like in the middle of the war in Syria, um, on the, in the border city, you know, it was very tense moment. So of course that people, we were foreigners coming to make a story about Syrians. People coming from my crew were from different, certain different countries. So, you know, nobody, you know, it was a little bit, people were suspicious and I would be if mm -hmm. I was Syrian or, uh, you know. But then uh, I think they were really all happy because uh, they saw one human story that didn't have a need to explain everything about the conflict, the history and blah, blah. I think it's more male thing <laughs> <laughs> in bad sense of that word. So being in China is another like um, incredible possibility for the filmmaker is to travel around the world and pre present something that you know, people would n never be able to see if they don't come to the film festival. Mm. So for me, last night, seeing this Chinese audience being, mm. having this emotional response was really so important. It brings me back trust in cinema. Mm. And, you know, if I ask myself, does it have any sense, you know, to do films? It's really long process, very expensive. And then you think maybe it doesn't have any sense at the end of the day, but uh, after these moments of meeting different people and hearing what they um, what they thought of, of, of your work, then it brings you back hope in cinema as well. Mm -hmm. And do you have anything else in the pipeline? What about next projects? Do you know what you're okay. doing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> after every project, I um, I promise to myself and my collaborators that I will do comedy or something very <laughs> <laughs> cheerful. <laughs> But uh, yes, I'm preparing something that is based on a Bosnian oral poem. It's a love story. And I will try to explore the position of women in, in post-war Bosnia. I, try, I will try to travel all, all around the place and to explore this strange contrast between emancipation and, and um, tra tradition in um, women in, uh, in women's life and, and, and discourse of, of, of uh, women in, in my country. Mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting and it's very unique in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know where this project will bring me, but I hope to explore also something uh, about the language of cinema to see how far I can go uh, from poetry to, to cinema, you know, is, can it be uh, equal in sense of um, metaphors or, you know, I, I try to challenge myself every time to try something that I didn't try before. So I hope this project will be uh, exciting as much as the previous one. And what are your views on diversity in filmmaking? at the moment? Do you feel that 
film has opened up a little bit so that there are different types of directors that can tell different types of stories? Or do you think that we're still a bit narrow in, 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 that, in that respect? Mm. Maybe if, in a way, it's, uh, you know, very um, fast uh, cinema come or go to, towards some kind of trend or some kind of, um, I don't know if I can say style, but approach that becomes sometimes boring. Like if you say art house cinema, it's, uh, people think right away, ah, oh, it's boring, there is no dialogue, you know, it's very slow and very long. And sometimes they're right, you know, sometimes mm. people jump into this, this kind of trap, like, ah, it's art house, it cannot be <clears throat> funny or fast, or I think we lack emotions most of the time, because I don't know why and how we uh, start to uh, think of emotions as something trivial. Mm. And I'm trying now, I will try to play with kitsch even, you know, I'm trying to mm. bring back this uh, happiness of uh, kitsch, you know, <laughs> in, in, in the frame. I don't know, I think that we shouldn't really be slaves of any kind of rule because European cinema tried to escape from rules of mainstream studio concept. Mm -hmm. But then we jumped into another uh, mannerism, let's say. So <laughs> I'm always questioning, you know, these yeah. two, um, how to say, like, um, approaches and trying to find some way how to maybe connect them on to, or to at least think about uh, what could be like um, surprising, at least for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like to put, uh, you know, I will try to, to play with it a little bit in my next project. Mm -hmm. But I think that the, the diversity comes from the fact that people have more chance to do uh, films, uh, if, even if they live in places where um, it's not, the industry is not developed. So that's mm -hmm. a great thing. And I think we shouldn't um, destroy this possibility of supporting these uh, s um, areas, starting from the area where I live until some faraway countries. And I think Europe in that sense is very important place. And if we, um, if we cut uh, this possibility, I think that we will ruin the spirit of uh, European uh, cinema and culture in general. Mm -hmm. So I still feel good that we can um, produce films that are not commercial and Europe is like a unique place to do so and I hope it will stay like that. It will not change towards some other directions because there are some initiatives to cut this kind of uh, possibility and I hope it will not happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's fantastic. Thank you.